Inner Voice. A heartfelt chat with Dr. Fujian. Break free from the forces holding you back. Get the life you deserve. Eliminate stress, reduce anxiety, decrease depression, and start living your full potential. Thousands have used Dr. Fujian Zane's Awareness Integration Theory, an evidence-based behavioral health breakthrough with incredible life-changing results. Getting rid of past trauma, having fulfilling relationships, increasing earnings, and living their best life. Now, the Fujian app is available to everyone. The app is Dr. Fujian Zane's Awareness Integration Theory in the palm of your hand. Download the Fujian app today. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to the Inner Voice podcast, Heartfelt Chat, with my guests and you beautiful listeners and viewers. I'm Dr. Fujian Zane. I'm a psychotherapist and author and the originator of the Awareness Integration Theory, and it's so great to be with all of you today. Um, many of you who are therapists, mental health counselors, practitioners, psychiatrists, psychologists, um, have asked about the concept of awareness integration theory. I really suggest for you to go ahead and go to um, awarenessintegration.com and you can get a lot of information on that. And some of the books that are out there, um, like Reset for um, all of you who want to practice this as a self-help model for uh, professionals who want to learn how to be with their clients and teachers who know, want to know how to um, have uh, this model work in their schools, they can get the Awareness Integration Therapy uh, book. And also for uh, intentional, for parents, for grandparents, for people who are raising children, uh, the book Intentional Parenting uh, from the view of awareness integration is available for all of you to do. We do have a certification for uh, the clinicians and practitioners and life coaches if they want to be trained uh, by, um, th by and through this model that they, they can be certified and actually become uh, part of our family and um, they can become also the therapists and life coaches who will be featured in the Fujian app, which is an app um, that is uh, has um, if you get come into the app, every area of your life, we look at this evidence base um, for eliminating stress, reducing anxiety and decreasing depression. Um, and we've done a lot of research um, in different universities and with different demographics, showing that uh, how much helpful it has been. And even with the people who have been using the app, they've uh, had almost 60 percent um, growth in that in those areas that if you are a therapist or a coach um, you can be featured in those where people who are doing the work on their own and they're uh, maybe wanting um, a little bit more of a deeper work that they could definitely uh, utilize your services in this episode I'm excited to chat with Paul Michael White he is a professional speaker mental health counselor he's a teacher and an avid fly fisher, as the author of Fishing for Reality, as well as the contributor to his new book um, from Newfoundland and uh, Labrador in Canada. Uh, and the book is called Tales of the Great Outdoor. Um, Paul and I talk about how his experience of fly fishing has really uh, given him insight and experience and how he brings that experience into who he is as a counselor working with teenagers, which is one of the hardest times in, in, in our life um, as we're growing up in those years. And it's so important to have mentors and people who are with you and teach you. We talk about bullying, we talk about how some bullies um, try to kind of find their victims and what who you can be in order not to find yourself there, what you can learn from nature and uh, the way that nature teaches us how to be in your serenity and uh, work through um, all of that. And you can definitely find Paul uh, White at paulwhite.ca. Um, and I hope you enjoy our conversation as much as I have. Now, subscribe to this podcast and my YouTube channel and connect with me through my website, fujanzane.com or any of the social media, social media. Share with me, share with me your thoughts, your, uh, your ideas, and uh, I love to hear from you. 
So without further ado, here's Paul White. Eliminate stress, reduce anxiety, and decrease depression. Dr. Fujian Zane's awareness integration theory has helped thousands like you get incredible life-changing results. The Fujian app gives you her evidence-based treatment in the palm of your hand. Download today. Well, hello, Paul White. It is so nice to have you on our show. Hello, uh, Dr. Fujian. Nice to be here. Well, you have been, um, I saw your pictures with a salmon and my God, you got big salmons. And in um, in your book uh, that you have um, actually a chapter, The Tales of the Great Outdoors, uh, there's wonderful pictures of you uh, with, with the salmon. And you really go through this beautiful journey of uh, what you do and how you do this and the fishing and all of it. Now, our audience are thinking, why are you going to talk about fishing? And it's like, well, you'll see why we're talking about fishing and what, what you have actually kind of learned experientially with everything that's there and how you've brought it into your life in you being a counselor and you working with children and um, so uh, how you're contributing all of these experiences in different way. So what got you into fishing first? Well, Dr. Fujian, uh, my grandfather, actually, my dad was a, a hard worker. He worked for the Americans actually at the U.S. Naval base and my grandfather was retired. So I became the protege. And back then it was, you know, part of the cultural authenticity that, you know, we went snaring rabbits, you know, um, and hunting and, and, but the fishing, I really caught onto that catching the trout. Then we got into salmon and the fly fishing. People have, I'm sure have seen the movie, like a river runs through it with Brad Pitt. The fly fishing is just so peaceful. It's kind of like, uh, if I can explain it this way for, for the fitness enthusiasts, like yoga and Pilates in action. That's how I do it. It's just a mental escape and you work muscles that you never even know your body had hopping around the rocks. So I took all that and, and you know, it, it's been, like you said, a journey to go from A to B. And I continue to live that journey. But it was my grandfather's early teachings combined with my own, ex, you know, experiential adventures that, uh, you know, br I guess brought it all forward. And then you, you know, become a counselor and mental health and you work with kids the key theme and it's from my grandfather is helping that uh, you know you you by giving you know we receive and, and by helping people out you help yourself and you feel good and you make a contribution to society and you know that's what i teach now especially to the kids who i work with and we have you know different groups fly time groups you know kids have been you know going fly fishing and uh, you know just getting them more involved in nature get them off the internet get them off the games I think everybody could uh, could use a bit of that. Absolutely. I think it's wonderful. Everyone who I have, uh, I haven't done fishing myself, but when I've gone with friends, which they have done fishing, you're absolutely right that there's uh, this meditative state that um, you go into. And uh, within that, though, there's also this concept of being with the nature in a whole different way, in a serene way. I think that, Many people who do hunting or do different concepts, uh, you know, of, with other animals in the nature, it's different than with fishing. It seems like there is this serenity that happens between the the person and the water and the fish, and you know, uh, there's this respect that somehow it gets created between you and the nature. Can you share a little bit about that? That what your experience has been that you brought from that, the lessons you brought from that to your world. I, yeah, I just got a thought on that. The key with the fishing is you don't have to kill the fish. Mm -hmm. And that's a big thing in society now. I mean, you know, the hunting, you know, you don't shoot something and then try and let it live. No, but with, with hook and release, and it's, it's brought some, you know, a great success to some streams and some rivers and some, you know, uh, fish populations that have been decimated. So people don't need to kill everything they catch. And uh, th that's a great thing, just being there. Like my buddy said, you know, if they go hunting big game like moose or bear, you know, once you pull the trigger and you harvest an animal, then that's work. But with fishing, you don't need to take anything home. 
And so you can be there, you know, in your meditative state. Uh, I like just going to the river and sitting at the base of the falls or somewhere on a cliff and just watching the falls. You got the fresh scent of pollen in the air, the springtime scents, the summer scents. You got the birds in the air. You know, sometimes you got the flies buzzing around you too, sure. Uh, and the sounds of the water gurgling and churning, and it's just peaceful. And when you're fly fishing, as I tell people, you can't be depressed and watch your fly at the same time. So you put everything out of your mind over there, and you watch that fly traveling through the water, waiting for the swirl. That's the meditative piece. And those who know, know. There are some people who, you know, want to try it. I encourage you definitely to try it, um, Dr. Fujian, because it is phenomenal. And so, you know, the lessons we learn every day is a new day. And, and probably the biggest lesson is you got to go do it. And every day is different. You know, you, you even those with the greatest of, of life experiences and the greatest experiences on the river or in counseling, whatever, you're learning something new every day in nature. It's got it's a wonderful place to learn and it's got a lot to teach us. And so, you know, that's why I encourage people, kids, adults, you know, get outside, get off the computer, get off the cell phone. And, and fishing may not be your thing, but something in nature, whether it's hiking, canoeing, camping, I mean, fishing is the metaphor, of course, uh, that I use. Uh, some people say, well, you know, call it the law of attraction, because you know, if you go hunting, you're chasing something. You're fishing, you're luring it to you. You're attracting it. You, you, you're trying to play, you know, trying to play one up and be smarter than a fish, which is an animal with, you know, with a brain the size of a pea. But they're very intelligent. So, but it, but it is a metaphor. Uh, for life. And um, I think we should all go fishing and do more of it. You also have spoken about the importance of finding a mentor um, in the process and how um, you learn life skills. So the life skills that you're learning, whether you're learning it from an animal or you're learning it from another human being, or you're learning it from nature by itself because of it, sometimes it's uncertainties that shows up. And although as a human being, we all love to control, but sometimes we become very humble <laughs> in, in the face of, in the face of, of nature. So can, and as we have become in California right now, very humble with the, with the force of nature. Um, sure. And, and it's a different way of being with it. And what did you bring and what who were your mentors and how are you using also your way of mentorship as you are uh, a counselor with school system and, you know, children from very young to growing up? Well, yeah, I guess that's one of the, the things my original mentor, my grandfather, uh, Skipper Mike Bruce, he was the skipper on his father's schooner. Now, his father, my great grandfather, had 54 years at sea, 54 years on the Atlantic Ocean. And they survived two August gales, uh, Captain James did. I mean, what a resume, 54 years. That's back when there was no technology, no cell phones, no big steam engines. They had a mast, a sail and a compass, and they did it. Um, so I learned an awful lot. And, and some of the biggest things were how to get along with people, helping people out, how to solve problems. You know, having self-esteem, you know, being your own best friend and relying on yourself, believing in yourself. And and my grandfather had this positivity about him. You know, you'll get one yet. You'll keep going. Keep, you know, so it was all this in, you know, intertwined in me. And uh, eventually, you know, you go to university and you go down different roads and you meet different people, uh, read different books, go take different courses, experience life. And then it all kind of it, it just kind of clicked, I guess, in the last couple of years that we're working with kids and the fishing metaphor and teaching them that, you know, the belief in self, having the self-esteem and the confidence to go do it. And of course, on top of that, and my grandfather, he just was a happy person. You know, he, he, he wasn't a fan of governments at times, but he didn't let it get him down too much that he still pushed ahead and, and did his thing. So once you learn that, and I'm sure you've had mentors as well, that uh, it, it just rubs off on you. You know, you, you become like the people around you, as Jim Rohn said. That was Tony Robbins' original mentor. You become like the five people, you know, you hang out with. So if they spend all their money, you're going to spend all your money. If they, you know, get involved in some, you know, dark and, and negative habits, you're going to do the same thing. 
So choosing your friends wisely. Another big thing that we, you know, we try and teach the students and, and to be, to be a leader. I, I thought about that the other day when I was driving, actually, that a lot of times with leadership, and if you're a captain on a schooner, as my grandfather was, you step up when no one else will, or people are afraid. And he, you know, having this thing called, uh, you know, fearless leadership, being, not being afraid, you know, what's the worst can happen, right? There's no polar bear going to eat you. If you if you want to you know take take a risk or take a chance or produce something or start a business or you know so you know dropping the fear and just going ahead and doing it and um, those are big things in, in today's society because when you know you're dealing with young people and like I said I went back into the school system after COVID and working with you know students in grades kindergarten right to grade nine a lot of peer pressure junior high it's a very tumultuous time more so now than ever and and teaching trying to teach and instill in the students they got to go through it but instilling in them that it's okay to be who you are you know be yourself be in your own skin you know no matter what no matter um you know your outlook on life because you know things will change and but you you got to go through it and um you know it's very it's tumultuous times it all goes back though i think though uh dr fujan to to nature and, and finding your place of serenity. And the last thing I'll say is my grandfather, he was a happy person. And if you can find that peace of mind, that no matter, no matter your bank account number, no matter what's going on in life, that you have that rock, that solid foundation that you can go back, whether it's going to the river, whether it's going for a run or a hike or going in nature, camping, climbing, whatever the case may be, that you have a solid place to go Sometimes just in your mind until you're clear and can really, you know, um, make the changes or make a decision or, you know, waiting for the storms of life to pass. So I hope that answered uh, some of your questions. Absolutely. Um, I, you're so absolutely right. because We learn from our parents first. We learn from people who are around us. And if they don't have all that they could offer us for our life, I think that what you shared about is having a mentor, having someone who has the skills of the next area that we want to go to is going to help us move forward. We can't expect our parents to have known everything and taught us. So we are going to learn it from outside. And we can't really expect that the school system and the teachers are going to teach us everything because they have a curriculum. Everything about yeah. curriculum of life is not going to necessarily be at school. So knowing how to find the mentors and, you know, finding what it is that I have a vision and want to do and find the right person who has done it, who knows it, who can teach it. And we could do definitely learn a lot from them and, and, and um, you know, find the place within us. And the other thing you were saying is that when we can't find the one it is inside of us, it's beautiful to go into a place where you could quiet down. Everyone, Tales of the Great Outdoors. It's edited by Gord Fullett. However, Paul White has this wonderful, wonderful chapter that he shares about uh, his experience of fly fishing. And then from there, uh, bringing you know, life into it and life skills into it. Paul, you also had shared about um, the uh, Witty's injured fly theory. And you say that uh, there's a way that a fish chooses a fly. And interestingly enough, you said you had kind of brought the same analogy of how an abuser chooses their victims. And I know for especially when we're talking about bullying, um, one of the times that a um, human being starts and really learns to do, you know, to uh, begin the perfect art of bullying is exactly around the age of the children you're working with, which is junior high. That's um, where you can see the best and the worst of humanity show up at first. And then, you know, yeah. it go, yeah. it then go, go, go beyond. Can you share a little bit about this? Yeah, the bullying, harassment. You know, when I grew up, and it wasn't too long ago, I mean, you, you, you tease. We still, you know, we, we joke on our camping trips. We joke and tease and have fun. And, and that's fine. Everybody gets along. But, you know, sometimes with kids, people keep it up and up and up, you know and it becomes it crosses the line and it's too much and uh, you know that's where the, the bullying kicks in you can have fun but you don't need to be hurtful and you don't need to be you know malicious 
And so, yes, it, it does. I mean, kids are born innocent and they learn as they grow from what they see, from who's around them, what they're watching on TV and video games and stuff like that. So, you know, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a very uh, challenging piece and it comes in school. I'll go back to what you said about parents. You know, uh, some people don't have, don't have the best of, of life experiences. It's just the way it is, you know. A lot of parents, especially in today's world, they're trying to make ends meet. They're they're struggling. They're they're trying to financially put food on the table and all all that you know and so forth. And so, you know, the students probably come and, and that's what they're seeking. And they and they find a, a teacher or a mentor that can bring them from you know where they are to where they want to go, kind of thing, which is great. Now the key with the bullying. Well, I mean, we could, you know, we could talk a week on that, but uh, I, it's one of those things, uh, Dr. Fujian, that it's really hard to get your head around, but I'll keep it simple, is that, you know, if you have the self-confidence, like my grandfather said, and the self-esteem, and you can really build that up, and as Tony Robbins would say, sometimes you got to fake it till you make it, you know, just your presence will keep the bullies away, but they do like injured victims. And I studied that in personality disorders and psychopaths and narcissists and stuff like this. And I looked at the patterns and I just got this idea one day from the salmon fly that I put forth into the world. And it's it's a movement now, shall we say. So they, they made a salmon fly for Atlantic salmon. It was spun with, uh, they spin the hair on, caribou or deer, hollow hair, and they trim it. So it's about the size of a cigarette butt. And it's got two white tails on the end from polar bear hair, calf tail, cat, you know, um, and then they wrap a feather through it, okay? And some of my buddies are very artistic, very creative. They can they can spin the hair, then spin the hair again and again and put eyeballs in it and, like, it's miraculous. Picasso, shall we say, you know, at, at, the, at the, the fly tying vice. So when I got throwing flies as a kid, I mean, I started out uh, young, and uh, and I'm pretty unorthodox anyway because I don't follow the mainstream. This is that, right? um, That's the one. So the the bomber was two white tails, and it had a nice hackle, brown or orange usually, in the middle, wrapped five five and a half times. And uh, but I started tying them, and as you can see, that looks like a small mess, right? Just go to the three. There's three there together. The next page up. Right there. Okay. And I couldn't afford the expense of, we call them saddles, the, the hackles, the, those are the feathers. I couldn't afford those. And I used to buy the other one, the cheaper ones. And, but anyway, I started making them as a kid. And when I got into it, um, I never really put them on. I, I kept tucking them in my fly box. And my grandfather and I, we bought some really good looking ones. And we all, it was all in our minds that the fish were going to prefer the really good looking ones. But so the, the whitey's injured fly theory was, I said, now the, with the salmon and the trout, trout are a bit different because they feed. The salmon don't feed in fresh water. They, they grow up in the ocean. They're what's called anadromous, Atlantic salmon, which is they spawn in the fresh water. But they w once they become a, a, just to become an adult, it's called a smolt, they go to the ocean and they stay there for, you know, several years or one year to to whatever, two, three, four, five years. And they, they feed and they grow voraciously and they come back huge. Then they go back. But in the river, there's only one thing on the mind and that's sex. They want to reproduce. That's their only thing. So why does the salmon actually take the fly? And it's, it, it's part of the Atlantic salmon fishing. We don't know. We really don't know. It's, I think it's instinctual or for whatever reason. But I noticed that the more ugly and rotten, I call them dirty because they're 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 rotten looking, and the dirty just stuck to me. Uh, that's a whole other story, um, but that name stuck to me. So we called it the dirty bomber. And um, like the more rotten and ugly, it, it it's totally imperfect. And so I put it out there. Eventually, you know, we were catching a lot of fish and not telling anybody. Once I put it out there and people started catching it, and I, I got a message there this morning. There's a guy up in, in another province in Canada. And, and the only fish he, anybody got that week was on one that I tied and sold him. It was crazy. And he's still laughing. He said, I can't believe he took it. But it looks like something that's been injured, just the way it floats on the water. And so when I looked in nature and 
yeah, like the, the, the zebra, you know, kill or, or the, the lion will kill the injured zebra with a vengeance. First, you know, I, and I've seen polar bears kill seals and come down. I mean, it's it's horrific to watch. But it's like something that's injured, they want to put it out of its misery. I don't know if it's an easier target. I don't know. But something that's injured, it's like nature wants to. And so with this fly, it looks like something that's imperfect, injured. And it's like the fish want to totally destroy it. Now, that as a fisher, that's exciting because now I got more action, you know, near my fly. And so, yeah, I, I just pieced it all together, you know, thinking a bit differently. I'm, I'm the one that said one time, and I, I'm sure people looked at me strangely was that okay so if we're if because i got a background in, in phys ed to an exercise physiology so if we release a salmon or a trout we you know we've had them on the rod for two three four five minutes worked them hard got them in took the hook out and now put them back in the river he's you know he's not going to dive he's not out of the water the water's cold you know we don't practice hook and release in say warm waters but if i release them after i've hooked them maybe someone hooks them again if they hook them the second time he's now more physically fit Prove me wrong, you know. Anyway, I, I, I uh, have all these weird little theories and stuff that it's just thinking a bit differently. And I got a lot of looks for that one. I'm like, Ray, this well, they've tagged fish before. There's been studies that hook and release does work if you know if you do it right. And uh, we're not killing fish. We're 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 letting fish live, and we're enjoying nature as well. So anyway, uh, you know that's how that all folded together with the injured fly and and you know the dirty when bomber. So what and, you're also saying, that, so what I'm hearing also for you to say, to bring it to the human being, what I'm assuming that you're sharing with us is that when um, even at school or with human being, when they see someone who is a little bit more vulnerable, that the, they go after that person who's more vulnerable with a vengeance. Is that what I'm yes. hearing for the belief? I, 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 I look at it like, they 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 know they they pick on somebody who who's probably a little bit different or different color here or different ways of being and yeah and sometimes the the bullies do that and that's a that is true it's it's a negative way to look at it but it's reality that you know and so we'll take it a step further is that uh, imperfection is great and and like the dirty bomber is a metaphor for life seek excellence not perfection because i had those flies in my in my vest and they were you know they looked really good to my eyes but the fish didn't think so when i put the other ones on and my grandfather said you know put it on who cares right and then i got into something here this was a this was a different swing this was a different tipping point and so yeah seek excellence seek success not perfection right beauty's in the eye of the beholder uh etc so you know, and, and that's what I teach the kids too. So if uh, what I hear you say is a good idea, if we could find a way to weave that in, that A, you know, acceptance of people not being perfect and, and acceptance of everybody's differences, number one. Number two, if someone is a little bit vulnerable, well, well we don't need to be the big salmon or, or, and, and destroy them with a vengeance. Let's help them out, right? Different down the river, but in life, you know, um, you know, people need help. The also the what you said, I think that in my experience of uh, working with trauma for past 30 years, um, it's interesting when you said when you catch salmon and then release and then catch salmon and release, that your belief is that they're more fit. Uh, and I've seen this in, in trauma work where people who have had traumas, um, Although there's, you know, they have, obviously there's an hour of vulnerability, but they have a lot of strength, like the resiliency, the power, the, you know, all of the things that have had to learn how to cope with matters has been so much that although sometimes when someone has been traumatized, they keep looking at their own vulnerabilities, their impact, perfectionism, their fears of being bullied again or being harmed again over and over again. But as we work and they actually see and witness the amount of resiliency they've had, the amount of power, strategies that they've used for their coping mechanism and how they've been able to survive it all and really own their power. They really see that every one of those traumas made them more powerful, made them more strong. I like it. And what you're saying there is so true. It, 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 it's like common sense corner. 
it makes sense, doesn't it? That, you know, the, the fight or flight syndrome, you, you know, you're like, just like weightlifting, you're building a muscle. It's unfortunate that you've got to go through those traumatic experiences, but, and, it, and teaching this to the students as well, or the adults, whoever, that you know, going through the trials and tribulations of life, it builds strength, it builds resiliency. And I mean, that's a big theme now. I mean, not only in the school system, but across the world that uh, like my grandfather said, you know, um, life experience is the greatest teacher. You, you, you know it, but once you go through it, boom, now you got, now you got the lesson. Yeah. Especially like if I read your book, I would start looking at the theory of fishing, but the, the theory is not the same as going into actually the water, trying it out, throwing it, seeing it, watching it, sitting there. Sometimes it takes, sometimes it doesn't. And when you do the excitement of it, how do you lure it in? How do you, you know, um, be respectful to the salmon or the trout? How do you take that hook out so it doesn't injure them? How do you, you know, say goodbye and, and release it again? And how do you go through the whole process over and over again and what happens? That experience creates skills, and the skills Correct. have sort of the only way you could even do the what you were talking about excellence is you've got to do it over and over and over again in order to become excellent in it. And some people expect themselves, oh, let me just learn it from let me watch somebody do it and then expect myself to be an amazing master at it. That's not the truth. Right. Is the yeah. experience constantly doing it that creates that mastery at anything for you to be able to be excellent in it. hundred uh, percent. You know, it's like, it's like the fly fishers now, you know, you need years and years and years of experience. And after 20 years, uh, as I discovered uh, a while ago, you're still only learning, you know, because when times get tough now, you've got to, you've got to buckle down and really put yourself to the test. And because, well, this year, for example, we had a very, very, Atlantic salmon, we had a very awkward year. I don't know, maybe it's the ocean temperatures are warming. Nobody knows, but the big numbers of fish didn't show up in July like they normally do. So a lot of people got discouraged, but it was nature teaching us something, probably relaxed, probably we were spoiled, there was a lot of fish. One of those years where, you know, uh, challenging. And um, a lot of people, you know, didn't stick it out. And I, well, you know, I, I, I go fishing, but not for the fish. It's for the mental health aspect. And so, you know, you're going to have those seasons of life where things are really, really good. And things are, sometimes things are not so good. And you're going to have to experience them all. And uh, to have your self-esteem and self-confidence and happiness, no matter what the outcome, I think that that's the key. And, you know, if we can teach that to more people, Dr. Fujian, uh, the world would be a better place, wouldn't it? And I want you to share some uh, some of your um, jewels of experience that you have every day with, uh, you know, the teenager. Again, one of the things that I constantly hear, I do parenting and I hear from parents is that, um, you know, their little girl or little boy has grown up and now has uh, a whole personality that is emotional and is uh you know, going up and down and they don't know their kids anymore because they just went into another phase. And when I talk to the teenager at the at that age, they're going to a whole different area of their life. And they're like, ha, I have no idea what's going on. And I'm just holding on this string, <laughs> you know, looking at my peers. And, you know, I obviously I don't accept my parents anymore. So now I'm just looking at these peers and see what am I supposed to do? Who am I supposed to be? And pretend that I'm all it. So these these are the transition time of um, going from, you know, like fifth grade to ninth grade. And then, you know, it gets a little bit easier, not that much in the high school, but the, the actually the time, the group that you work with is the highest level of, a tr you know, emotional transition that they're going to find their identity. What would you share? If there are parents or um, educators that are with us and, and listening and viewing us about what to think and what to do and how to be, uh, to be the best mentor that we can be, the best, um, you know, counselor or the best parent uh, that we can actually be for them and for this group. Well, the first thing I would say is it, it's going to be okay. It is long term. It's going to be okay. More often than not. Now, sometimes tragedy strikes, sometimes high stress strikes. We know that when that happens, 
let's cross the bridge then. Uh, don't jump to conclusions. Don't play mind games with yourself. You know, little Johnny, little Sue, whoever is going through a rough time. It's hormonal. They're creatures. They've got to figure it out for themselves. The best thing we can do is be there. Be there with open ears. Be a good shoulder to cry on. Be a good listener. Be a good listener. Drop the control. Sometimes, you know, the, the over-controlling of, of people by their parents and by people around them. You, you think about a, a boss you may have had who's really like a control freak. You know, do you really want to work for that person? Really? Like, you know, we all want autonomy. We all want freedom. We all want someone to respect us and have faith in us to we're going to make our mistakes. Nothing in life is perfect. So I tell parents, like, just just pull back. Let them go. You know, let, just be a solid place of love and support. And if you can't do that, then, you know, you may need to talk to somebody yourself or 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 seek help or some and some of the best friends or some of the best counselors, shall we say, are good friends. I tell that to the kids. Like, you, you don't need to come talk to me. Right? you got a good friend. You only need one. You don't need to tell everybody. You only need one or two. But one good one that you can share with and get it out. And it's it's going to be okay. Now, there's going to be challenges and trials and tribulations and strife and all the emotions. You're going to feel it all, especially as a teenager. But it's going to be okay long term. You're going to have to get through it. And uh, the other thing is one day at a time. Take it one day at a time. All, all this simple stuff that uh, that I learned, you know, you, you learn it from your mentor. You learn it in school, university, and growing up. And then you really learn it when you live it. And uh, but that's a big one too. One day at a time. The the worst case scenario is is if it is you know tragic or very very uh, because the the mental health world today it, it it's it's difficult. I said you know several years ago before this COVID virus hit the world, whatever you think of that. But I said that uh, the the number one epidemic in the world pandemic was was mental illness. And, uh, you know, the, the suicide rates are skyrocketed, the stress, the drug addiction, you know, it's all related. And But that is the epidemic. And so having a bit of a handle on that, knowing that, you know, and you might need to reach out. You might need to be the one to take your um, child to to an emergency and, and, and cause a bit of a storm to get help. Because, some, you know, the government's uh, put so much money in and I know healthcare workers are overworked and sometimes they feel underpaid and whatever the case may be, but it's difficult times. And sometimes you've got to do whatever it takes because parents will do more for their kids than they will for themselves. You've got to do whatever it takes to get your, you know, your child help, to get help, to make sure that they're safe. And, um, but it is a one day at a time adventure during puberty, no doubt. Absolutely. Everyone. Tales of the Great Outdoors, uh, Paul White as uh, an amazing chapter. And um, you can definitely learn a lot from how to, the, the lessons you learn from the nature and how you bring that lesson into the nature of your life every day. Paul, is there anything we haven't shared that you really want people to know? No, really, I, I think uh, well, Newfoundland and Labrador, I'm, I'm going to put a plug in for sure. I call it the last heaven on earth. You know, we've had some, like you said, you're in, in California there now and you've had an earthquake and you've had flooding and you've had uh, in, in British Columbia on the west of Canada. I know friends there and friends in Northwest Territories, which is north with the with the wildfires and the forest fires. I mean, the whole um, place has been evacuated and a lot of my friends are in Edmonton, now the big city, one of the big cities in, in uh, Alberta. We were pretty safe out here, clean air, clean water. Um, 9-11, once uh, the planes crashed into New York City, um, you probably, there, there's a show out. Actually, I'm going to see it for the first time uh, this September. It's called Come From Away. And Newfoundland and Labrador, we, you know, people here opened up their houses and schools and communities. And we had, I think, 6,000 uh, passengers and several hundred planes were, were stranded in uh, Gander, Newfoundland uh, during 9-11. And, and we took people in. Gander used to be a... Uh, another U.S. naval base here, and now it's a Canadian one in the province of Newfoundland. And I just encourage everybody, if, if you ever um, put it on your bucket list to come visit as a tourist, take it in, uh, enjoy the culture, of because we're English, Irish, Scottish. Wow. And the people came here, yeah, 
uh, way back 1497 was John Cabot. He sailed from overseas, shall we say, and discovered the new found land based on, on the fishing grounds. And I guess that's how um, our part of the world developed. I know um, who was the guy who sailed the blue? Christopher Columbus. He was here before. And of course, the First Nations were here long before that. But but the Newfoundland, and uh, it's an island, northeast coast of Canada, of, of North America, actually, and a great place. And Labrador is the adjoining part of the province, which is connected to the mainland of Quebec. Lots of big salmon up there. And uh, yeah, I, I think everybody can learn. The, the, I guess the last thing, if you get the opportunity, any of our listeners, I mean, travel is a university or a college education in and of itself. You know, get outside your hometown get outside your home state, get outside your home country. If you, if you have the finances or the capabilities or save up, go do it. You learn so much. And uh, I think, you know, as, as we were on this globe, uh, this planet spinning, revolving, going somewhere through space and time, that, uh, you know, we learn a lot, we live a lot, and, and we have to make the most of each and every day. Um, and... You know, that, that's a key from Newfoundland. The key was help um, and do the best you can with what you got. Yes. We went to, we just got, came from the uh, cruise from Alaska. And part of the excursions that you go into this is we go back into Canada, right? So you, you do right. the, a lot of the, um, like the train rides and the bus rides and all of that takes you back into Canada. And uh, so just to let you know, uh, salmons are coming over there. <laughs> they were just jumping and you can see them. You can oh, see them jump up and some of them, have, you know, unfortunately would jump high enough to fall on a um, stone and not be able to go back. And, uh, you know, they would they would bring themselves up and say, here I am for the, you know, uh, for the bears to get. Yeah. Them. But um, yeah, there is a. Uh, there's a way of being with nature that I also experienced in Canada and Alaska that um, it's just all it it's almost like this message of all is well, no matter what. Yeah. Nature takes care of itself. You know, I think she's off a bit now, but I don't know, just one of those shifts. And who knows? Global warming. CO2, and maybe that's I don't also. Know, but... Maybe that's also a way it's taking care of itself uh, beyond yeah. us as a human being. So I, I agree with that. Well, it was a joy to have you on the show. Thank you very much. I hope uh, you got something out of it. I sure did. Oh, great, absolutely. Uh, Paul, how could people find you? Uh, PaulWhite.ca. My name, P-A-U-L-W-H-I-T-E dot C-A. Beautiful. And for all of you who are out there, create an amazing life for yourself and everyone around you. And until next week, bye-bye. Eliminate stress, reduce anxiety, and decrease depression. Dr. Fujian Zane's awareness integration theory has helped thousands like you get incredible life-changing results. The Fujian app gives you her evidence-based treatment in the palm of your hand. Download today.